Today, uh, we'll be looking at uh, chapter four of the book, which is which is about uh, data transformation. And at Dolin, as she has volunteered uh, to present uh, the chapter to us, so I'll just give her the floor. She should go ahead and introduce the chapter. So we are going to start off with uh, chapter four for data transformation. And here we are going to have objectives where we are going to use the mostly the deployer package from Tidyverse package. And here uh, there are functions that will help us during the transformation of our data. So we have like the filter function that will help us to pick rows and then the arrange function that will help us to sort out the rows in our data set. We have the select function that will help us to pick out columns. The mutate function that will help us to modify columns. Then we have group function and summarize, summarize function that will also help us when it comes to the columns in our data set. Uh, after that, you also have the pipe operator that uh, Onwards, we'll see how it will help us in streamlining our data transformations. So as we start off, we can see uh, when we want to start uh, tidying up our data or transforming it, we'll first install our package that is for Tidyverse. And then we load our package Tidyverse. And from there, we, we'll, we'll when we load our Tidyverse package, you see that we have the deployer package there that helps to also run the functions that we'll be using here. Okay, so here we'll in, we are going to use the nice flights package. And so we'll, we'll install it and from there load the, the nice flight package in our R Studio. So if we want to just, uh, when we load our data set, most times we want to browse and just view our data. So we can, we can start, first we, we can just write flight and it, it will give us a modified data frame that is a table here. But if, if you want to view the whole data set, you can, you, you can also just write the view function the view function, view flights with capital V, and this one, it gives us the whole, the whole data set with everything, nothing modified. I think we can show it. We can show it somewhere here. Yeah. So, like for this, we can see the whole, the whole data frame is shown here for view. Yeah. Yeah, so when you come back here, when we view the data set and you observe, like in our data set, you can observe the number of rows. We can, and here, you can also check the number of rows in the flights. We can check the number of columns that we have in our data set. That will give us 19. We can check the, length of our flights that also gives us the number of columns it's the same as when you call number of n call that's for columns and also we can go ahead and find the dimensions or dimensions that give us both the rows and the number of rows and the number of columns and so if we want to like uh, if we code call names that is we want our data set to show us the names of our variables and it outputs all the names of our variables and as you can see here there are some that are abbreviated so maybe if we want to get to know more information from our more information on our caller names and what they mean and what they have we can we can just uh, uh, write like the question mark flights like what, what you saw in the basics workflow this and this will give us 
uh, we'll go to the help pen and just give us everything that we want to know about the data. I think it is here. I had already done that. So here we'll find a description like of everything that is contained in the in the flights data frame. And you can always read about it, go to the links and read more about what is contained in our data set. Mm -hmm. So yeah, comparisons. So as we go ahead, we can see that here we are having comparison operators and most of us, I guess we know like greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So the interesting bit comes when we come here to the equal signs, like in R, we, we don't write it as just equal, like A equals to B. We have to tell R that uh, is my A equal to B. And so our equals, it's a double equal sign. Like if you try and put like um, A equals to B in R, it will actually give you an error and try to confirm if you actually meant the double equal signs. So that, that was quite interesting. We also had here the not equal signs, the exc exclamation mark, which actually means not here. So not equal to is another comparison operator that was that was quite interesting. So when you go ahead, you can see that <clears throat> I will evaluate the operators that you input and actually it will try and evaluate or assess if it's it's true or not, if it's right or not. So like is one greater than two? If that is not correct, it will give you a false output. So we can use the, we can see that we can use comparison operators too actually directors yeah so here we can see is one equal to two that is not true so it will output output a false answer mm -hmm. this this uh, comparison operators you can also use them in characters and uh, in our uh, I guess as I was going through this, I saw like uh, it bases its output on the order. Like for alphabets, you can see like uh, when it puts our A, B, and C, it orders them and see like is the A string, A character get greater than the B string. And when you base on the order, this is actually false. So I, I think that was my reasoning, if I'm correct. So it outputs a false output. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. is A, the A string greater than or equal to B? So when you base the order A, B, and C, you will see that A is actually not greater than B. And so I will tell you like that is not true, so that is false. And then outputs a false answer. Mm -hmm. We can see here, is the A string not equal to B? So here we are not basing on the order. Okay, I think it's of the order too, but it looks at A and B and they're not the same. So it actually tells you, no, this is not true. So the value in putting is A not equal to B. That is true, yes. So it gives you like, that is a true output. Mm -hmm. So R is usually case sensitive. So your lower cases, lower cases might not actually output the answers you want when you when you put upper cases too, like the lower cases are not equal to or they're not similar to upper cases. So um, here it actually tells us for English lower lower case letters are less than upper case letters. So like if you put the string A is this A string greater than the uppercase string? And it will tell you false because it it uh, puts uh, it assumes the uppercase uppercase letters actually have 
a larger value than the lowercase letter. So it, like for this, it will output a false output. Mm -hmm. So as you go ahead with, if you want to like, if you, if you want to use lowercase variables or lowercase values, we can actually change that using the function to lower and to upper. If you want an uppercase, you can use to upper. And here we can see we are telling her uh, change this uppercase a to a lower, a lower, a lower case. So like to lower, I'm using this function to change this and it actually outputs. It knows this is true. This is what you want to do. So it gives me a lowercase value. The same goes to the two upper. And here we can also see the A string. Is it equal to an uppercase A, which I've actually uh, told R to change it to a lowercase. So this is true. And it will tell you, yes, that is true. And it gives you that. Here we also have logical operators and uh, R uses and, and all expressions in our, when you're writing these codes, all expressions must be true so that R returns to you a value. So it looks at uh, the expressions you've input, like true and true, and all of these are true. So it tells you, yeah, that is true. But like when we view this one, it tells you this is true and false. So you're actually uh, telling her, I have true and I have false. So what do I have? Like it doesn't, these are not true and true. So like, what do I have? It is false because I don't have true and true. I actually just have one true value. So this is actually false because it's just one true value. Mm, the same goes, the logical operators goes on for the true or false. So it can either be true or it can either be, be true. So it evaluates that and that is true. Either this or this, and it gives us true. So it's either true or false. It can choose one and that is true, this. Orders for that. Mm -hmm. The exclamation mark, we say that one is for the not ex yeah then exclamation mark is like for negation, so we are negating this expression and we're saying this is not true. If it's not true, it's false. So that is false. If it's not false, it is true. All right. And then this is not not true. Like it is. That's good. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. So I was on logical operators, sorry about that. All right, on logical operators, you are trying to, to see that in, in logical operators, R uses and, and it actually evaluates our expression. And this expression must be true in order for a true value to be returned. So like it evaluates, this is true and true. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay, so if both of these are true, so it tells me, yeah, this is true because both of them are true. Uh, this is true and false. Okay, this is obviously wrong because not both of them are true. So this is false. It gives me a false value, false output. Okay, we have here true or true. So either one can be true and it evaluates this. And yes, this is true, this is true. It gives me a true output. True or false. This is, it evaluates this and it returns a true value because one of them is true. So yes, the output is true. We talked of the exclamation mark. We talked of this, I don't know if I can open this room. Yeah, we talked of the exclamation mark and we saw that 
this is you can actually say this is not or you're negating this so you're negating your expression like this is not true if this is not true it is false so it's outputting false if this is not false it is true okay so it goes that way and then we have here a unique one where it is not not true so not true is actually false which is, when you negate not false again it's not false it is true so it actually gives me a true value when you come here sorry when you come here we can actually assign objects with numbers or your values so we have actually assigned one with a like a gets one and then b gets five so here we can compare our objects and numbers like is a less than three is my a less than three yes my a is one so that is true it gives me a true output is my a not equal to three I look at my A, my A is one, it is not equal to three, so it gives me a true value. So basically logical operators, R just evaluates it, and if it's, if, if it's true, gives you that, and if the expression is false, it will tell you it is false. It also compares objects, like is A equal to B? That is false because my A was one, and my B was five, they're not equal. So that is false. Okay, so I think logical operators are straightforward. Uh, we can go here, comparison and logical operators and look at this. Is my, my A, is my A greater than three and also my B greater than three? My A was one, was it greater than three? That is wrong, that was not true. My B, was it greater than Three, yes, my B was five, it was greater than three. But both of these are, are not, this is actually false and this is true. So this is an and expression, both of them must be true so that a true value is output. So this, this is false. If we have a, a question, can we just ask as I go on? Okay, so in filtering rows, here we are using the filter function and the fil filter function actually just picks out rows basing on the column that you've selected. So like for here in the filter function, our first argument like most other arguments, we start with the, we start with the, most other functions, we start with the, the data frame that you are using so here I have my I have the dimensions of my my data frame, the rows and columns, which I can see here there are more than three hundred thousand rows, and I have nineteen columns, and then my column names I have them here. So this is simpler because as I filter I can just look out at my column names and choose which column I want to work with or which rows I want to work in, so, so I filter my data set and I only want to choose um, November. I want to choose flights that are from November because 11 is the, is November. So I only want to choose flights that are from November. So it will come here, pick out my month from November and actually filter my data to only contain flights that are from November. And here we have the flights that are from November. As we go on, we can also filter here. It reminds, okay, table, table is a modified data frame. And here it also, it gives us like a concise or elaborate uh, viewpoint of our data frame. And you can see here that as I filtered my data, the, the number of rows actually reduced you can you can actually use this or see this and see if your analysis is actually right and makes sense so like my data set is reduced that makes sense my rows are 27,000 and not 300,000 so yeah that is right so 
I can also filter the flights from the month of December and it gives me that. And you'll, you can also see here, the rows have changed. My columns are still intact, 19. Hmm. We can see here, we, we can actually use a comparison operator. Like we are saying, I want to filter the flights from the not from the month of December. So it will give me flights from all other months apart from the flights from December. And they're here. Here we can see I want it I want it to filter my, my data frame to only contain months from flights from November or the flights from December. And we can also notice the change in our rows and columns. Columns remains intact, but the rows have changed. So the in filter, our, our data set, just the existing data set doesn't change. Our original data set doesn't change. And if, if I want to, if I want to remain with the data frame that I'm filtering, I actually just assign it to an object and R gives me a variable that contains that object that only contains the data that has been filtered. Okay. So here, I can see here, we can also use and or or, like I want to filter my data to only contain flights from November or the flights that are uh, from the first day of any month, the first day, any flight that departed on the first day. So that is what it will give me, All right? So we can also use comparison operators to put that into our arguments, our function. It's the same here. So with, with the filter, with the filter function, uh, when you write and, and when you write comma, here the deployer will, the deployer package will automatically just view the comma as an and, and it will have the same output. So like these two, these two codes are actually the same. They'll give us the same output. Like it filters uh, flights from the month of November and every flight from the first day. So if I just put a comma here and not and, it is still give me the same values, the same output as this one. Yeah. I already mentioned this. Uh, our original data set will not change. So if you want to save our results, the data you filtered for any result, you just assign it to an object and it will you will remain with the filtered data. The environment actually will save that object and you can view it from there. Then we head to missing values. So in missing values, uh, actually, R actually sees this as like blank cells, like unknown values. So if we try and tell R like my unknown value, is it greater than five? My unknown value, is it equal to, to another unknown value? Every unknown value actually are just outputs unknown, like another NA. So if you try anything with N, NA with NA and non-value blank, blank cells, I will actually tell you, you know what? I also don't know that value, so that is NA. All right, hope that is understandable. Mm -hmm. So if I want to check if values are actually missing in my data frame, I'll use the function 
is.ma and then ma and you, it will oh, and if this is true if there are missing values in my data frame it will actually tell me yes that is true so as you filter and you don't specify or you don't tell uh, you don't tell your r to you to actually notice that there are na values in your data frame it will actually exclude the NA values. So as you're filtering, like for example here, we create an object DF and we want to, to create a table, a modified data frame, which contains the columns one, NA and three. Okay, so I have the number of rows as three and the number of col or columns as one. Well. So I want to filter my this DF data set, data frame. I want to filter it and I only want to filter values that are greater than one. So values that are greater than one, if I look at my at my values here, the only value greater than one is three. So it will exclude the NA and only give me three, which is this. So if I want R to notice that I have NA values, I actually use the function is.na. So filter the data frame, the DF data set and is NA X. These are my NA values contained in my data set. So it should see it should notice the NA values and all or the values that it counts or it outputs values that are greater than one. So yes, it will notice the NA value, which is only one NA value in my data set, and which values are greater than one, it's only three. So it gives me three too. I hope we are together, I haven't gone missing again. Okay. Are we together, kindly? We are not seeing your screen. Okay. Now you're okay. seeing it? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Okay. So we are at arrange rows and we are arranging it with the arrange function. So here it's the arrange function changes the orders order of my rows. And here, like in other functions, my first argument will be my data frame. And that will be the flight, the data frame I'm using. So I want to arrange my data set the order of my rows, and I want it to focus on the deep delay column. Okay. So if you view this, you'll see that the deep delay column, okay, yes, the deep delay column, if you view it with the original data set, where is the deep delay column? I think it's this one. If you view it with the original data frame, where is it? Here. You'll actually notice there is some arrangement of that rearrangement. The order of the rows have actually changed. And by default, it arranges that in an ascending order from the small one to big one. So we can see that the numbers are increasing as you move downwards. So if you want to specify that it arranges it from the big values to the small values you actually use the this the this descend okay this function to specify that and if we if we use the this we can actually see there is a change here and you can see it's now from larger values and they're decreasing so as we started with the uh, with arranging with just using one variable, one column, 
We can also sort this and arrange our rows using multiple columns. And here we can use like for this example, we can use year, month and day. So it will arrange our rows basing on the columns year, month and day. And it will do this in an ascending order. It's by default. Okay. So in the arrange function, it, it actually puts all our not applicable values at the end. At the end of the data set. So like for this example, you can see in our modified data frame, the the NA value, if you are if you arrange it, it will actually give us the NA at the bottom. So with the arrange, if you actually practice with the data, you'll see all, all the NA values will come at the end. Right. We also have the select function. And here select picks out columns. Now here we're not going with the rows, but it actually picks out the columns that you want to use, let's say for analysis, the columns that you're interested in. So you can put your column names just for easier identification. So call names for flights, it gives you all your column names, and then you select from my data, data frame, which is flights, select the columns here, month, and day, it gives you that. It selects for you there. Okay. Here again, select from my flight, flight data frame, the year all through to the day. So here it selects all the columns that are in between year and day. And here they are. So year, month, day. So this is year through, all through to the day or year to day. It actually just gives you that. Mm -hmm. We can also use the negate or, yeah, let's say negate or remove. So it selects uh, from the our data frame, which is flight, all columns except the ones from year to day. So every other columns except the years that the, the columns that are in between year and day, including these two columns. Okay, so here it outputs every other columns except the columns that are from year to day. We have other helper functions that are in this functions for the select functions. So like I would want to select some columns but I would want to specify some, some desirable things in my columns. So like for here starts with, I will select uh, from, I will select from my data frame, I will select, select all columns that actually start with the deep. Mm -hmm. So we have deep delay, deep time. So it only selects columns that starts with this string, this expression, yes. Mm -hmm. We also have ends with, it selects uh, columns that end with the delay string. So the deep delay and add delay were the only columns which had that. So it only selects the two and outputs that. Mm -hmm. We also have the contains. And as you select this, you only want variables that contain the, the string depth. Okay, so every any column that actually has this string depth, it will output that. All right. Okay. Matches. This one was interesting. So here, uh, I want to select columns that actually matches to this expression. So I write A and any any value, any expression that is in between A and R, it can be a full stop, a comma, another letter, anything, but it has to have A and an R. Okay, that was my explanation because I was 
noticing from my output it was it was giving me the ar time ar a this one and only the values in the middle were different the expression here mm, so it columns that match this regular this expression sorry mm -hmm. so it only selects those columns Uh, Olua Femi, would you mind uh, elaborating on this? Okay, so this uh, thing, this, you mean about the regular expression? This uh, matches, if I explained it correctly. Yes, so it's only going to check for those columns that meet this expression, you know the beginning of the column start with what letter A, then the period that dot means that every other character that belongs to that category of A is going to pull out everything from the text. So it's going to return only those columns. I think uh, okay. we are still coming to this thing when we are looking at strings, because this is a, another section, we'll still come back to it. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that was right. Thank you. Uh -huh. So here, I also noticed that, okay, most people will, will name their variables in different ways, especially this x1, x2, x3, x4, like that. So let's say I just want to select columns, but I have the same, like it starts with the same letter, but they're different numbers. So I can select from my data frame uh, using the function num range. And this is similar to every column, column name, the X, but I only want to select from a range of one, two, three, because they're here like X1, X2, X3, up to X4, but I only want from X1 to X3. So I select from X, but from one to three and it outputs that. We have the rename function in select. Uh, we have the rename function and this one, it changes our column names. And the unique thing, not unique thing, but one thing you need to put in mind that it is from the new name to like the old name is on you are, is it the left or the right? Right, left, left. And then the new name is on your right. So it changes that from, like for here, we can see rename from our data frame. The, you want the new name to be departure underscore time and the old name was dev underscore time. So we can see here like, okay, it's not full, but we can see like it changed, it changed the, the name, it renamed that column name to that so yeah that was also nice so we've noticed that in select as we are selecting our columns mostly i will output the output the columns that we've selected so if i want to if i want it to output with every other column I, I not only want the columns i've selected but i want it to include all the other columns i can use the everything function and here i come and select from my data frame which is flights i select the column time hour air time and everything so it will bring the first two columns that I've selected at the forefront, time hour and air temp, and then the rest of the other columns will follow. So that is nice if you just need the whole data set to be output, but you're also focusing on the on the, the ones that you selected. Okay, so there is also the mutate function and this one, the mutate function adds another column to our existing data frame. And this one, when it adds, it bases its uh, addition from the existing column. So our 
whole data frame will con contain the existing existing columns and new columns. For example, for here, um, I'll have my object name. This is my new ob my object name, and I want it to select uh, data from year to day and only columns that end with delay. And my new object name should contain the column also distance and their time. And so if I want to now add another column, I will mutate. I use the function mutate and it takes, uh, it takes values from the new object, okay? Flight seven columns, it takes values from here. And then with addition to that, it creates uh, another column called gain. And this column can actually use the existing functions. You can actually calculate from the other existing existing columns, sorry, existing columns, like you take dip delay minus that, and another column hours. And this column will actually compute airtime divided by 60, another column gain per, per hour, and this column should contain values that are from this computation. Yeah, so from our output, you can note that there are other columns that were added. You can see gain per hour, we can see hour gain. These are the ones that you mentioned should be included in our data frame. And this, the output of these columns were actually, they came from the functions from this, these other columns, like we can see here, the operations from these functions. So you can actually mutate or add another column using the existing columns, functions from the existing columns. Okay, so when you mutate, actually our data frame changes and it adds another column. Transmute is more likely, okay, let's say similar to mutate, only that it only outputs the the new columns that you wanted it only gives the data frame only con contains the new columns that you wanted like for here like for the last um, when we did mute it here now we are doing transmute and it only gives us gain hours and gain per hour only the new columns that you need so we have useful useful creations here and you can useful creation functions and here you can use other functions and use them with mutate. Uh, we can see here arithmetic operator that we've used before as we were moving up. And we've used uh, minus, division, addition. We can use aggregate functions like the sum and mean. We can use modular arithmetic. Mm. I think here, uh, like when when in in mathematics when you are doing integer divisions and you use this percentage division percentage, okay, uh, this will give you a whole number and then this one will give you the remainder of that division. And how we can use logs, lead, cumulative. Okay, let's just look at the examples here. So like this one for transmute and you're using a modular arithmetic and deep hour, depart, departure time and uh, integer division by a hundred. This one will output the whole number and then this one will output the remainder of the division. I don't know if it was done here. For example here, like the departure time and we were dividing it by a hundred. Here, you'll see it will give us the whole number five and the remainder of it, which was 17, which is actually departure minute, departure hour. So, yeah. Okay. This one's a more on arithmetic where you can put an object and use an arithmetic mm -hmm. and it gives you an output. 
Okay. We can get to the next two. So in the next one, here we can, uh, it's uh, about the summarize function. And summarize, uh, it actually just collapses the whole data frame and gives you a single row. It returns a single row values. So like here, to summarize the, the data frame flight, and here we are looking at the mean of the deep delay column. Okay, delay. So it computes this and gives you a summary of that. Uh, the summarize function includes the NA values. This is different from the filter function, which actually just, if you don't specify, it, it won't output that, but here it will output NA, you see like this one. If any values are not RNA, it gives you NA. That is mean. So if it computes the mean of a column and there are values that are unknown, of course, uh, it won't, I won't be able to do that because there are values that are unknown, so it doesn't know. So it also tells you, you know what? I do not know that, so it gives you an NA. Uh, so here we have to specify, you need to use like, na.rm, like remove the NS. So this is true. So remove the NA values. So like summarize from this data frame, the mean of this column, but you remove all NA values. Mm -hmm. So it will only use the values that are known and give you the mean of that here output. So we said if you want to check the missing values, you can use the is NA function and that, and we can check the number of NA values for columns. So like for here, uh, we can check number of rows. So it checks the number of rows from this filtered data set, data frame. So checks the missing values in this column, deep delay, and after it checks for the missing, checks the number of missing values in our column, it filters that, and then it tells us the number of rows that are there, that have NA. Here we can see the exclamation mark, the not. So here, mm, it, it counts or, it gives you the number of rows, the number of values that do not have the NA values, filters that, and then give you, gives you the number of rows that do not have the NA values in that, the number of rows that have values. So we can also use a summarize function and group by function together yeah, we calculate values for each group. So you group by a particular column and then you summarize the information, you summarize the function for that. So for example, here, we, use, we create, a, we create a, an object and then we group, we, group by, we, group, we group our data frame by these columns, by year, month, and day. So as you've grouped this, you want to summarize this objects, the new objects that you've created. And you want to summarize this by using the function mean. You, can, you compute mean of this column and you make sure you remove all the not applicable cells so that it actually counts, it actually computes the cells that have known values. So it summarizes that and gives you a data frame that contains the means of year, month, sorry, the means of the deep delay column, yes. 
the means of the deep delay column, but grouped by year, month, and day. Okay, we can also combine multiple operations with the pipe. And here, uh, instead of using separate functions for when, when you want to compute everything, so you are using separate functions, you can use pipe to just connect every function that we are using. For example, from the flight, so from the flight, we get here, we group by year, month, and day, then you summarize this. So from flights, group from the flights, then group by this, then summarize this by doing the mean of this column and remove all the values that are not applicable. So the pipe actually just connects this and helps you to just put it in one place like a summary and you just do that. Mm -hmm. So here we have the count, uh, and here count to use this function here, n, with the brackets. If you want to count non-missing values, you sum, and then is, is for knowing the missing values in our data set, and not. So the non-missing values, you actually negate it, and then you sum. So uh, the pipe is actually used in the plier and tidyverse, but when we're when we trying to plot uh, or using uh, ggplot, we actually, we have to remember we use the plus, the plus sign. So from the delay, you then filter your data to contain values that are greater than 25, then plot a map containing these aesthetics, but we add, the, from the geom point, you, I didn't know this one, wasn't sure of that, but- no, That is to control the transparency of the plots, alpha. Okay, alpha, to control the transparency of the plots, all right, thank you. Uh -huh. If we, if you, if you, uh, so from this, I got that uh, the deployer, the pipe, you can actually use it with deployer and tidyverse, but when you are coming to plotting, you remember to use the addition sign to add functions. Then it outputs that plot. So there are useful summaries here, functions. You can use, uh, this comes when you're doing statistics and we are analyzing and you're trying to get the median, the maximum, interquantile ranges. Yeah, that comes useful. And you can actually use this in conjunction with the group by and the summarize functions and count. Mm. So uh, count, you can actually count is a shortcut. This was interesting. Count was a shortcut for group by and summarize to return count by group. So here, not canceled, then it uh, from there, it groups by the destination, then it summarizes by this count. So you can actually just use the shortcut, not cancel, then it counts by destination, by this group, and it outputs. It outputs there, and the count for each destination. Mm -hmm. In the count function, we can also use the sort to true and it sorts our results. Can I have part this and sort the results? All right, all right. Sort the count. This sorts in an in a descending order, right? Okay. Yeah, I think it's in a descending order by default.
Sorry. When used with numeric functions, true is converted to one and false is converted to zero. So actually true and false can be equated to one and zero. False is basically zero and true can be any other number, but mostly we use one. So like sum true, it will actually, I will equate the true to one and it will give you a one value. Okay, sum false, it will give you a zero value. Okay. Uh, excuse me, Oluwafemi, can you explain this part? Which part, sisters? Is it the sum true or what? True is converted to one and false is converted to zero. Yes, yes, yes. You are okay. correct from your explanation, you are correct. All right, all right, all right, thank you. Okay, counts and proportions of logical values. So here we can use sum to give us counts and then mean will give us the proportions. Uh, I evaluate this and if it's true by exp expression, it gives us a true value. So here you can actually see not canceled then you group by year, month, and day, and then you summarize uh, here from this object, the sum from these columns should be greater than 60. So it summarizes this, groups this, and gives us that. So by year, it counts the summaries here. Take the rest of the same. Here we can also group by multiple variables. Mm -hmm. This is the same like we talked about. Number of flights per day. You can count that from the flags and count the flights uh, the, right. Mm, I can't get that. You have a data frame that is called daily at the top. Okay, okay, wait. So now All you're right, doing... okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, daily here. <laughs> an object, I'd created an object called daily. Sorry. And I'd grouped this group by from my data frame of flights, I group this by year, month, and day. So from this object, from this new object or data frame, I summarize that from account uh, flights count. Okay. Okay. Kindly explain this. So now you are creating a new object that is called per day. So once you run mm -hmm. this code, you remember you open with the opening brackets and closing brackets. So yes. a new object will be in your environment and it, it will also print out the output. So this is okay. always useful if you want to create a new object, but you still want to view the result at that, that same time. So you can put opening brackets, closing brackets, surround it with a opening and closing brackets so that you create the new object and you can still view the result at that same time. So if you run that code, it will create, mm -hmm. drop a new object in your environment called per day. It will also print out the results on your console. Okay. Okay, okay. Per month here. Uh, I think it's the same as the other one. It will it's print out any object so per it's month. It's the and same thing. Sorry? I mean, because of time, I'm looking at my time. We are supposed to end okay. at six. Sorry. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing, same as this one. For ungroup, I think here you can use the ungroup functions. Uh, you can find your data set has uh, 
you've already grouped it and you want to analyze so you can ungroup then and group that then uh, summarize or do an analysis on your on your on your data frame Mm. The last one, you can also use grouped by function in conjunction with mutate and filter. And I think this was self-explanatory, just like the others. You use group and then you filter your data set. Like here, you filter it and you specify in a, in a descending order and by rank and you filter that and you use group by flights. Okay. I think we are we are okay with them. If there is any question. Or any addition. Uh, I'm sorry it took uh, more than an hour, but I hope we are okay with that. Yes, there is no issue. Any issue, any? Okay. So I'm done. I'll give it back to you, Olua Femi. Okay, thank you very much uh, for finding time to present the chapter. I think we really learned uh, a lot. So we'll meet at uh, the same time. Uh, I also, before, I would like to apologize also for the time because we are supposed to use one hour, but we took more more time today. So maybe next week we'll try as much as possible to walk out with the time. So we'll meet the same time next week. I think I will be looking at workflow pipes is the next. And I think there is a volunteer already. Fanny Kuma has a volunteer to present that chapter. So we'll see you next week. Hey, thanks very much. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you.